the more I plug into my power supply, the more it costs me. The more I plug into a power point, the faster my meter turns, the more it costs. Let's have a look why that happens from an electrician's perspective. We'll be looking at a toaster, 850 watts. We'll be looking at a coffee machine, 1,100 watts. And we'll be looking at a jug of 1,750 watts, all running on New Zealand's standard low voltage 230 volts. The way the equipment is set up here, it allows us to view the voltage at the moment 235.4 volts. It also allows me to view the current flowing through the components from the power supply, across the meter, through the clamp meter, and then in through the power box. So let's have a look at the toaster. Three amps. Coffee machine. Three point eight amps. And the jug. Seven point five amps. Now for some basic maths. Toaster, 3 amps, coffee machine, 3.8 amps, jug, 7.5 amps, you just need to add them up. My prediction is 14.3 amps. Let's have a look. Toaster. Toaster power on. Toaster. 3 amps. Plus the coffee machine. Plus the jug. 14.6 amps. This is reality. That's close enough for us. To determine why the current went up by adding on each of the appliances, we need to have a look at what the overall resistance of the circuit is. We know in New Zealand we have a 230 volt supply. We can use the formula R equals V squared over P. We're going to work out what the resistance is of each component. V squared is New Zealand standard 230 volts and P is the power of each of the appliances. Let's have a look at the toaster first. Two thirty volts squared divided by eight hundred and fifty watts. Eight hundred and fifty watts was the power of the toaster from the nameplate of the toaster. Sixty two ohms. It's not exactly I haven't carried three decimal places, and that's because the age of the appliance will have some bearing on the actual resistance, and because this is an industrial situation, we haven't got exactly two hundred and thirty volts as determined before. I'll carry on with the jug and the coffee machine as well. Inside the multi-box that controlled the, uh, the toaster, the coffee machine and the jug, the connections inside are in fact in parallel. So we have a phase supply and we have a neutral supply. The connection phase and neutral here are in fact in parallel, wired in parallel inside the multi-box 
So effectively we've got 230 volts from our supply and when we plug the toaster in we were connecting a 62 ohm resistor across 230 volts. We then connected a coffee machine Eight ohms across the supply, and then a jug. I've written whole numbers there. I've written whole numbers there because we have a power supply that's not exactly 230 volts and because the components will have slightly different variables than that inside them. We need, need, we need now to do the maths that shows us what happens to that resistance as a total. Each time I turn the supply on, the current went up. We're going to look to see what makes that happen. Now I need to work out the total resistance of these three components together. We'll use the formula Resistance totals, resistance number one, resistance number two, and resistance number three. Resistance number one was 62 ohms Resistance number two was 48 ohms. And resistance number three was 30 ohms. Total resistance in this case is 14.225. Total resistance is always going to be less than any of the resistances that there is there. The lower the resistance is, the higher the current will be on a resistive circuit. Using these formulas, how much current should have flown into the circuit? Our voltage was 230 volts. And our total resistance comes from there. That gives us a total of 16.189 amps. My calculated value is 16.189 amps. It's not what we actually measured. We measured 14.189 six. There's some variation there. There's some variation there because the voltage was a little bit variable. The age of the components and I haven't rounded some numbers. It's close enough for me. It's two amps out. It's reality. What I'd like you to do now is go back, view the video again. Attempt to do the equations. Pause the video while you're looking at it. Attempt to do the maths then play the video and look to see how you're getting on. Right, that's it. Hope that helped. Remember, go back, have a look at those questions again, see how you went on. Try covering them up, try doing them again. It's practice. One other question. How many different pairs of safety glasses did I wear during this video?